Good afternoon. This video I want to deal with the deception of Peter Ruckman and how he deceives people and sets up words in order to set up his own arguments. Strawman, he sets up Strawman arguments. In his, arc, his uh, article, in his essays on biblical topics, uh, this is 1984, Ruckman's Peculiar Teachings, which everyone considers heresies. Faith works in the Old Testament and the Millennium and Tribulation were considered peculiar teachings, heresies. Now, uh, he goes here, now the standard heresy runs as follows. Old Testament saints were saved by looking forward to the cross. New Testament saints were saved, are saved by looking back to the cross. Both are saved by grace through faith. That's the issue. Now, the, the cliche to say they're looking forward to the cross is, is a cliche, and it's incorrect technically because there are different, there are different Gospels. That's in the Schofield notes, people. 1909, that was being taught. And, and Bible and Baptist churches, which are where the dispensationalists really were, they had those Schofield notes, and they grew up with the Schofield notes. Now, he has to put in here exactly the same way. See, now what these guys are going to argue about, this is what Peter, uh, what, uh, Robert Blake puts up his list. See, they don't want to say that way, that way, that way. No one's saying that. But they were saved by grace through faith. And their walk was different, and certain things happened to them differently. But they were saved, which meant they were receiving imputed righteousness, they were justified, and they regenerated. These guys say they won't regenerate. So just because things are different in the church and than other dispensations doesn't mean that certain fundamental things weren't the same. And they who also say exactly, exactly the same way. That's how they pulled this con off. This is how they pulled it off. I'll read, I'm going to read the big flap. He point out. He points out this is considered a great heresy among Christian Christianity. Yet no one's answered them. See, that's why I deal with them, because that argument is, no one's answering us, no one's discussing it, no one's talking to them. Now, Max Bowers point, brought us some articles that did address the issue of faith works up what a heresy is by other dispensationalists. But they ignore them. They said, no school has answered us. Why should any school answer you? For one thing, no one's taking notice of PBI. There's <laughs> no school, you know, Florida, no one cares. But look and see how the virus is spreading among dispensationalists and saying, now you see like what uh, uh, Anderson's group did when they made their movie. They put in Larkin and Schofield and Darby and then they put in films or, or clips of Kim and Breaker and Brian Dengler. Like those are the modern representations of dispensationalism and they're not. So here it is. Noah was saved by building an ark. See now, why are we putting about to Noah? Thinking that was a, a, a spiritual salvation. That was a physical salvation. He built the ark because he was saved. He showed his faith. And he, caused 11, he was 11, 11 7. By faith he built the ark. He was a saved man. Abraham was saved by believing he would have children. Yes, yeah, so that's a different gospel. He believed God. See, they want to pretend that the different gospels weren't existing back in 1909 and 1917 with the Schofield notes. So, Baptists knew about different Gospels. So the idea that, oh, they, they had to be saved by grace and faith is exactly the same way, and they had, you know, the same God, that's covenant view. Covenant view is that there was no change in the Gospel. But he's not dealing, dealing with covenant people, which we know are heretical, he's dealing with dispensationalists who are Baptists who grew up on the Schofield notes. Danger, David was in danger of losing the Holy Spirit, but didn't, so what? See, he's trying to sneak in something. Losing the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament had nothing to do with your salvation. It had to do with your walk. David said, take that into joy of the Holy Spirit. That was his relationship with God. It was basically his walk was an issue. See, he's sneaking something in a lie. Saul lost the Holy Spirit and did not get him back. So what? Still saved man. Samuel said, today you'll be with me. You and your sons will be with me. Absalom, uh, 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 Absalom was one of those sons. Not Absalom, uh, I forget, uh, uh, Jonathan was one of those sons. Same man. The Holy Spirit was in Old Testament saints uh, in spite of propaganda that he only came on them. No, he's in them, yeah. But he could leave. He wasn't indwelling them in a permanent sense like he's doing with the Christian today. So he could go in them. Of course he came in, in them. But the honor is trying to say, well, it could be temporary. Could, uh, the anointed could leave and come. But the point is, he could be in them. Yeah, he's in them. But he could leave because it wasn't a permanent state, a status. See, when somebody reading this would say, oh, wow, yeah, well, mm, yeah, boy, he's like, I didn't think about that. Because you haven't read Schofield and you haven't read Locke and you haven't read what they've said about the Holy Spirit, that it was temporary in the Old Testament. 
based on what a, a, a particular function that God wanted to do, that individual would perform, he would give them the Holy Spirit. Not to have anything to do with salvation. Samson lost the Holy Spirit and got him back. Okay. This is supposed to be proofs, people. This is what they consider proofs of something. The Holy Spirit was in, okay, so they were in, not one man on the whole list went up into the third heaven when he died, although all New Testament saints did. So what? The blood hadn't been shed yet. The blood had to be offered up in heaven. This is what Bob Baker said. Well, no one went to heaven yet. <laughs> okay? That one man on the list was spiritually circumcised. Okay, so what? That had to do with your walk. Your body's made a temple of the Holy Ghost. Theirs it wasn't. That had to do with salvation. Although all New Testament saints are, oh boy, proven now. Now one man on the list was regenerated or born again. Now how did you know that? How can you have a relationship with God if you're not regenerated? You have to have a human spirit. 1 Corinthians 2.14. So the idea that uh, 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 an Old Testament saint not being regenerated is ludicrous. Absolutely ludicrous. How can you communicate with God if you don't have a human spirit? God has to regenerate you, give you a human spirit. Now one man on the list was in Christ's body, so what? That's what that guy, uh, Walker, says. He makes a big deal about that. So what? That's a particular relationship we have with God and gives us the basis of eternal security because we're in union with Christ, but Christ is forming his body, the bride. That's why we're in union with Christ, just like Eve was in Adam. Because uh, Christ had no body till Acts chapter 2. So what did I do with that? <laughs> so, uh, three men on the list of, were on the covenant of faith and works. No one's, see, he assumes that. No, no one's on the covenant of faith and works. Nobody. And of course, John 1, 17, Romans 10, 1 through 4, Deuteronomy uh, 30, 11 through 20. Go a little look at Deuteronomy 30, uh, 11 through 20. Deuteronomy 30, verses 11 through 4. Look, 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 look what the works were involved in, people. This is a very deceptive man. All his students are very deceptive. For this commandment which I command you command this day is it is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. It is not in heaven that thou shouldest say us who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it. Neither is it beyond the sea that thou shouldest say who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it. But the word is very nigh unto thee in thy mouth and in thy heart that thou mayest do it. See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. Not doing eternal salvation. It's doing life and death. Blessings and cursings. In that I command this day to love, thy, to, love, to, to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, this is a walk, and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments that thou mayest live and multiply. It's blessings. It's not the eternal security. I mean, it's dealing with the eternal salvation. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land where thou goest to possess it. And uh, it goes on here, but if thou if thy heart turn away, so if thou that will not hear, but thou shalt be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I denounce unto you this day that you shall surely perish. Yeah, perish means die. Into losing your salvation. And that you shall not prolong your days, blessing, losing your blessings, upon the land whither thou goest thou passest Jordan to go up to possess it. I call heavens and earth, heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death. Not eternal life, or eternal death. He's talking about life and death, physical life and death. That's what they always went to Ezekiel 18 and Ezekiel 3. That's the big proof test. You know, the, the wicked shall you know, turn and do good, and then, you know, he should be, he'll have life, and the, the good, stop doing good and does bad, you know, he'll be, you know, he gets killed. It's physical. Um, therefore, choose life. That both thou and thy seed may live. How's your seed going to live based on you getting eternal life? It's talking about there staying in the land. This is a proof text he just gave you people that's trying to prove faith and works. This is all about staying in the land. It has nothing to do with eternal life. Nothing to do with eternal life. But he, these guys with full proof text and oh my, he's using the scripture. <laughs> and read the scriptures and figure out what he's doing. That thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou may, uh, mayest obey his voice, and that thou uh, mayest cleave, cleave, cleave unto him. For he is thy life and, and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land. That's what the Mosaic Covenant was about. Never about salvation. Which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to give him. So he gave you a proof text, and 
You know, and that's what they always say, oh, well, I give you scriptures. Oh, wow, look at that. And then you read them and say, what does scripture do? They're talking about physical life, physical death. It's about the seed, you see. You can't pass on eternal life to your seed. Now, remember, he's saying exactly the same. No one's saying the Old Testament. And remember, we go back to the school through notes where he had different gospels. The Baptists were not teaching that. The Baptist dispensationalist churches, independent Baptist churches, were not teaching the nonsense that there was only one, one gospel. Covenant guys thought that. But that's the straw man. Then he's going to try to stick on a live dispensational salvation onto a dispensationalist who understood different gospels. Uh, let's see here. So he quoted that verse. Oh wow! See, I proved it. Where two sins, uh, where, uh, where two sins have no blood atonement, that will cure them. Psalm fifty-one, sixteen, First Kings two twenty-nine, uh, Jeremiah seven nine ten, Exodus twenty-one fourteen. So what? <laughs> they still, they were, they were forgiven on the basis of the cross, not the law. Technically, God, uh, David should have been killed because there's no sacrifice to murder. But the point was, God forgave him anyway. But he got he got punishment fourfold. Uh, let's see how ye, how ye, say ye then that Old Testament salvation and New Testament sal, sal, salvation are the same. They're the same in a sense that it's always by grace through faith. See, he wants to make it exactly the same. That's what they set up people, the straw men. It's exactly no one's saying they're exactly the same, but they are they are the same in the sense that they are, it's all by grace through faith. Don't be conned by these lies. Adam was not born again. Yes, he was. How does he talk to God? <laughs> He's not being born again. Once he was spiritually dead, that's why grace had to come in. He had to be born again because he can't talk to God. That's where he's hiding. Uh, Noah was not spiritually circumcised and, crucif and, cruci uh, and crucifixion was unknown for the form of death and punishment in his day. Well, Noah, it doesn't matter if Noah was spiritually circumcised. He was a righteous man. He was a saved man. And he built the ark because he was a saved man to show his faith. And it doesn't matter. No one's saying, see, he's trying to set up the idea that dispensational Baptists believe there's only one gospel. And then he's trying to set up the idea, oh, you know, oh, well, see, there's no, there's no circ spiritual circumcision, you know. And so what? Let's deal with your walk. Let's deal with your walk. Because your body's now the whole temple of the Holy Ghost. And you have two natures. Okay, uh, he certainly did not look forward to the cross any more than Abel. No one said he did. He looked. He, he believed what God told him to do. God looked forward to the cross, and on that basis, he forgave him. When Abel offered the, the blood of the lamb by faith, he was not adopted. He was not redeemed. He wasn't redeemed. Well, how could Luckman himself says the saved in Abraham's bosom? How could he not be redeemed? Redeemed on credit. But Luckman says, and this goes commentary, he's with his Bible, uh, Luke 16, he's a saved, let's just say people, saved people went to Abraham's bosom. How could you be saved if you're not redeemed and justified and regenerated? How can you be saved? That's why I call these people lunatics. Because they just throw out every other element of self, soteriology in order to fit their, their perverse doctrine into, into, into dispensationalism and ignore other doctors, soteriologists say, look, a person has, has, excuse me, has to be regenerated to be, have a, a human spirit to talk to God. That's what regeneration is. You get a human spirit. You have a dead spirit. That's all unbelievers. That's why they can't, they have no understanding of God's ways. They can't communicate with God. They can't understand scripture. And so they all, you think Moses is an unregenerated man? I mean, that's what they have to believe. He's unregenerated. He's talking face to face with God. He's not regenerated. They'll say anything, these people. Okay, uh, he was not uh, completely. Uh, he was not completely propitiated. Well, that's a different issue because propitiation hadn't happened yet. But God forgave him on the basis of a future propitiation. The propitiation happened when the cross was finished. On the basis of the cross, that's what the resurrection proved. See, they're throwing little sh things in here in order to to, to, to deceive you. You know, a break wants to tell you because the blood wasn't shared yet that somehow these people in Abraham's bosom hadn't been hadn't been uh, uh, really saved through the blood being applied to them. God applied the blood and credit. And God's credit's very good. <laughs> he knows what's going to happen. Uh, 
He was not regenerated. He's not placed in the body of Christ. So what? You think everyone saved has to be put in the body of Christ? That's why you have a bri- the, uh, the friends of the bride. You think John the Baptist wasn't regenerated? Wasn't redeemed? He's a friend of the bride. Oh, you have to save him. You put in- what? <laughs> now, it's such obvious, obvious scriptural truths clearly set forth in any version of any translation of, uh, of any Bible in any language from 1900. You see the buster. You see the buster. This is supposed to overwhelm you with his knowledge. Why do you suppose that that they that is that the faculty members go right on teaching heresy? Well, they always did. Apostasy is incurable. What they want to do is prevent you from searching the scriptures to see if these things be so. And also, well, we want you to look at the scriptures. See, they don't want you to look at the scriptures. Guess what? They try to. I have a little three thousand subscriber video uh, ministry here. I get a few hundred people. And these guys are taking notice of it. That's, just, that's amazing. That's just absolutely amazing. They're so upset. They are 45,000. Break is like 240,000, 240, And I get, you know, but they can't stand it. Just that someone's up there. And other guys, of course, like Max Bauer pointing out and, and, uh, and Jay and, and, uh, Book of Relief, you know, Phil. They're all pointing out. Says, these guys are lunatics. <laughs> and they go, they go crazy. They're going crazy. In, independent Baptist, local Baptist church who are a dispensational group went up on, on, on the uh, Schofield notes and understood that salvation was always by grace through faith. But they were different, they were different gospels to believe. They had a problem with that. Uh, let me see here. You will find that they have been lying to you. See, that's, see it's a right to him to lie, say that they're lying to you, but we're not allowed to say, say to you that the, the, he's lying to you. He accuses them for lying to you. They're, these are the schools. But we're not allowed to say that Ruckman's guys are lying to you. And what faculty member would appreciate that? What faculty member would appreciate Ruckman pointing you, know, you on such a trail? Simple, isn't it? Yeah, it's very simple. Check the scripture. Once, you had, once he said in his, in his work on the big flap, he says, Grace begins from Genesis 1 right through. 22. And that's not, that's not correct because it begins in Genesis 3 because in the, in the garden there's no need for grace because you have of innocence. But the fact is, is when it starts in Genesis 3 it can't be mixed with works based on Romans 11.6. If it's grace, it's not a works. If it works, it's not a grace. You can't mix them. That's a principle. That's not dealing with a dispensational only. This dispensation you can mix faith with. He, that's its principle. A setup, he set up a principle there saying, this is a fact. You can't mix grace and works. Paul is saying. Now what dispensation? Because God's character won't allow it. Did you know why these Bible rejecting fundamentalists are raising such a sand over Ruckman? Because he's a, he has a book who, that knows all about them and tells it. It's the King James 1611 authorized version. Any edition put on by anyone except the phony New King James, uh, Dobson, Faustin, and, and Hinson. We now, we know, we now know why the Old Testament saints had to wait until Calvary, but none of them knew then. Yeah. Scopa told about that. And what they did, they did by faith, and in the case of the Jews after Exodus 20, 20, by a system of faith and works. Now, see, notice that? He said, no was saved by building an ark. Now he's going to say it's a system of faith and works after Exodus 20. You see how they keep shifting on you? He's going to say if Abraham was, had imputed righteousness uh, in Genesis 15, but in Genesis 22, he had to prove his faith. His faith was different than yours. So it's a combination of faith and works. But then he comes up here and says, well, the works system really began in Exodus, Exodus 20. See how they keep shifting? Very deceitful. To say that they were saved exactly as we are saved. No one said they were saved exactly as we were saved. We didn't say the results were the same. We say it's for grace through faith. And certain things happen to them that happen to us. Not all. Not everything. But he, he puts the word exactly in there in order to deceive you. He knows what he's doing. Under a covenant of faith and grace is to teach a genuine, non-biblical, anti-scriptural false doctrine. Fundamentalist p- teachers will continue to teach, uh, teach it. The credibility stands or falls on maintaining lies. That's what Buckman's system. Buckman's system is, is built on, uh, is, is, depends on maintaining the lie of dispensational salvation. That is why these guys will cling to it and fight to fight for it to the death. They can stand as long as, as the lies stand. That's rough. He can himself for that. I'll deal with the uh, big flat. 
show you. But he goes to Deuteronomy 20, you know, uh, uh, in Deuteronomy, uh, the in person, uh, Deuteronomy, and what's it, what's it dealing with? Is it dealing with anybody's salvation? Deuteronomy 30, verse 11 to 20. No, nobody's dealing by eternal salvation. It's dealing with the walk, staying in, in the land. Oh, see that? <laughs> see what? And then you say, faith works began after Exodus 20. But he'll have Noah told an ark. He was saved by works. He say he can't say, you know, he was saved by works. No, he wasn't. <laughs> Abraham, his faith wasn't justified until James, which he was faith works. Lie, the lie, the lie. And he's going after the fundamentalists and, and ignoring the Baptists, the Schofield believing, Schofield notes believing, understanding they had Schofield Bibles since 1909, had an independent local churches, they understood different uh, Gospels. Kim points out Larkin taught different Gospels. Well, it started with Schofield. Larkin didn't really teach anything new, people. All Larkin did was lay it out. He was a draftsman. And he, he laid everything out in a visible form. He didn't put anything in there that's, uh, that wasn't really taught. So I'm going to stop and put this up. See, yeah, he says, because that a group of liars who rejected the heresy of dispensational salvation, and he will say they have to maintain the lies. That's what the dispensational salvationists have to do. And they think if you don't answer them, they can't be answered. That's their little thing. Oh, we can't be answered. Look at the scriptures. We got Deuteronomy 30, 11 to 20. We've proven our point. <laughs> That's what they do. They just switch words, meanings. Uh, oh, well, it eternal, there's life there. So I mean, it's eternal life. The seed, your seed shall survive in the land. You can't pass on your eternal life to your seed. So stop, put this up, and um, deal more with the, uh, these lies and deceptions. And uh, the reason I put them up is not, you know, so they be there. So people, that's why Kim doesn't like it, because my, my videos must be showing up on the line there. They hate me. They hate, they, you know, they're so arrogant. You see a workman acting, you know, like, you know, he proven this point exactly the same. They say they're the same. They've saved exactly the same. They've saved exactly the same since it's grace through faith. That means exactly the same. the The consequences of the salvation, the uh, what they had to believe in order to be saved, and by back in 1960, why I wrote the book on this uh, classic of dispensational. It's talking about uh, the content of the, of the gospel change, but the means was always by faith. Uh, faith alone, faith through grace was always. Based on Romans 11.6. You can't mix grace and works. It's as simple as that. And then they go into the millennium. Well, everybody's going to be walking by sight in the millennium. No, because you have, they'll be fully persuaded. And their faith gets tested at the end of the millennium when Satan's allowed to come out and deceives many people to revolt against Christ. And they've seen it. <laughs> Everyone's seen everything they need to see. And they still go with Satan. Many of them do. Some don't. And they're saved. And they go into eternity. The physical bodies. They go into the physical bodies. So stop with this up. Amen. Thank you.